Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. This is video number two in the final series I'm doing for the GIMP uh, in uh, for Python scripting or Python foo. Uh, once again, this is an introductory, very beginner level um, look at the Python programming language because we're going to be using that for our scripts. If you are comfortable with the idea of functions in Python, creating your own very basic ones and also just the idea of what they are, then you can skip this video very easily um, and you can just move straight on to video 3 where we start looking at the GIMP specific Python uh, functions. However, if you haven't done anything with Python before, then this is going to be an important uh, couple of concepts for you to understand. Uh, this is going to be a much quicker video than the last one, um, so really it's just one idea. We'll see some quick examples of it in action and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is open up the Python console once again. So if you remember, we go to filters, Python foo, and console. Now in the last video, we used the type function. So if you remember, we um, typed in type, and then if I type in a string of information, um, it will return that for me. It will tell me that the type is string, or if I type in uh, type 1, it will tell me it's an integer. If I type in type uh, 1.0, you should know the answer to this, it will tell me that the type is a float. So this is a, a built-in function in Python. It means uh, somebody thought that would be an important thing for us to be able to do, so they've made it easy for us to figure out the type of any variable that we put in or any type of uh, data. We can actually create our own functions too, and it's one of the core ideas to this, uh, one of the central ideas to this type of programming. Let's just say I want to print some text onto the screen. Uh, so we might say print uh, hello world, which is usually the first thing people get you to do. And then I might also want to say print um, the old programming cliche, because it is. Let's say for some reason I decided I wanted to do that again and again and again. Rather than um, continually writing out that one line of code or those two lines of code every time I wanted to see those print statements, um, I can create a function that does that for me. So what we're going to do here is write def, which means we're defining our um, program. I'm going to call it hello world. Uh, and then I have an opening and a closing parenthesis after that. Then we have a colon, and that tells the console that what comes next is stuff that goes in that function that we're building. Now you'll notice when I press enter here, um, the interactive prompt that we've been working with has changed a little bit. Um, we now have this ellipsis. When we are creating programs, in Python, we need to make sure we use the same amount of indentation um, for anything that is nested into the line above it. Okay, so the the function that I'm writing contains commands within it, and because it contains those commands, it's, we show it as being nested by indenting a certain amount. You can indent by anything you want as long as you're consistent. So for my purposes, I will be indenting by two spaces. Um, I'll try to remember to tell you that every time I do it, but if I don't and you find that something doesn't work, check your indentation first because that might be one of the problems. So what we have here is an ellipsis to say that we haven't entered in any information yet. We're still working on defining this function. So I'm going to put my two spaces in. Uh, I'm going to put in my first command, which is part of my new program. So print hello world, uh, then I press enter. Now you'll notice that I've got the ellipsis again, and my cursor has gone back to the beginning of the line. Now because I still want this to be a part of the function, I need to indent by the same amount I used last time, so another two spaces. So I say print the old programming cliche, or cliche if that's a word, um, and then I can press enter again. 
Now you see, as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of my function. It's a very simple function, it only does those two things. Um, but Python doesn't know I've finished yet, so it's given me that ellipsis again. Now if I were to indent twice again, um, it would let me continue adding more lines of code. If I just press enter at this point, then it knows I'm finished. Because it knows if I'm not indenting anymore, then I must have reached the end of the, fu uh, the function that I'm writing. So I'm just going to press enter. And you can see over here, instead of the ellipsis, we've now got the interactive prompt, the, uh, the three chevrons again. So all I need to do now, if I want to call that function, um, and when I say call that function, I just mean, you know, ask that function to, to work. Um, I can just type in hello world with the opening and the closing parenthesis. We need to remember that each time we write a program, uh, every time we write a function. Um, we actually need to put something in that parenthesis in a minute, but you can often leave them blank and it, it just tells Python that it's a function that we've done. So if I press enter at this point, hello world, it now runs the very short program that I wrote for it. So you'll notice this is similar to the type of uh, to the type function we used before. Um, we've got the name of the actual function, and then it's followed by parentheses, these round brackets. But when we had the type function, we actually had something in those parentheses. You know, we we put in a label, or we put in a number, or we put in a decimal uh, decimal number. So let's see what that's all about. Um, some functions take an input that they can do something with. Okay, so you might give it two numbers and it will add those two numbers up or you, give it a, a, you might give it a radius of a circle and knowing the formula to calculate the area of a circle, you could put that into a formula, you could give it a radius and then it will tell you, oh, well, then the, the area of the circle is, you know, whatever. To show you an example of that, I'll just use that example I was just speaking about of, um, of just summing two numbers. So I can create a simple um, program that is going to add up two numbers. Uh, we say def, so we're defining our function. And we say sum, that's the name of it. We open the parentheses, and then we give um, labels to the inputs that are going to go into this, uh, that will be passed into this function. Uh, we use we can use either hard coded values or we can use variables. We're going to use variables in this point because we know what those are. Uh, so we're going to say a, and I'm also going to pass in the variable b. I close the parentheses, and then I have to remember the colon, and that tells Python that I'm going to now set up the rest of my function. This one's a very simple one. Uh, the first thing we need to remember is to indent by two, so that continues on from what we were doing last time. This time I'm going to say uh, I want Python to print to the screen, so print um, the value of A plus the value of B. Okay, so whatever A is and whatever B is, what we want Python to print to the screen is those two things added together. Um, I don't need it to do anything else, that's all I want it to do, so that's the end, so I can just press enter again. So now if I want to call that function, I can't just write sum and then an open and close parentheses um, because it tells us here that sum takes two arguments. Okay, so these two variables here, they're called the, the arguments that the program takes or that the function takes. Um, and I can't actually just write sum a b because a is a variable, but we haven't defined the variable a yet. So what I would have to do is type in something like sum uh, 1 and 2. So if I press this, hopefully, if everything's been set up correctly, it should return the value of 3. And it does. Um, or I could do something like sum uh, 1.0 and 2.0. So I can give it floats instead of integers and it still knows how to handle that, and it provides the output as a float as well. So I just said you can't just pass A and B back into that uh, function, but if you think about it, there is a way that I can do that. If I set the variables before I pass them in, so A equals 1, B equals 2, so now 
now Python knows that I've set those values of uh, A and B, so I can just prove that by saying print A, print B. Uh, if I try print C, that's not defined, okay? So it only knows what A and B stand for. Um, and now if I say sum uh, A and B, it knows what that means. So it's not giving me that A is not defined error message anymore because now A has been defined, so it knows that the answer is three. Now I could also write this, uh, sum A, a literal A, and a literal B. So take a moment to just pause the video, do that for yourself, type that in. Before you press enter, think about what result you expect to see. Okay, You're passing in the literal value of A, the literal value of B. Look back at the code up here, see what that's going to, what you're asking it to do with those values. Have a guess at what you think the output's going to be, and then try it. If you're right, then it means you understand both the content of this video and the last video, because the clue is in the last video. So as you can see, what it does is it concatenates A and B, because we've told um, our program that the value of A is the literal letter A, and the value of B is the literal letter B, and what we've told it up here is take whatever is A and whatever is B and add them together. But when we add literal strings instead of numbers, um, it concatenates them instead of it adding them together. So that's why we get that. So for example, if I was to say sum um, Jackson Bates and then a space, and then I put in 2015, we'll get the same output that we were getting in our last video, Jackson Bates 2015, because it's concatenating those values instead of adding them up. That's not an error, that's what I've told it to do. So if it's behaving in a way I wasn't quite expecting, that's because I need to think that through. Anyway, in the next video, we'll start to dig into GIMP's procedural database to see what functions the GIMP comes loaded with. This is where it starts getting a little bit more complicated, but it's also where it starts getting a lot more useful when it comes to the GIMP. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been enjoyable for you, and I'll see you next time.